with Aaron and Kelly, and we are in the studio at KCAA right here in San Bernardino, California. We are so happy to be back. It feels, it's been a while. We've been out of here for what? How long has it been now, Jose Luis? Ten months. Ten months, and we are excited to be back. Uh, we thank you so very much, all of those that you are, are tuning in right now live, and those of you that subscribe to our YouTube channel, those of you that watch us on Mikasa Broadcasting. Uh, we've got a huge show for you today. We have, and this is exciting because if you have not seen The Prophet and you are actually watching this on demand right now, pause this, go watch a show, then come back. That's how good it is. The Prophet on CNBC. You can watch it on Hulu right now or just check it out somewhere online. In fact, I would I would venture to say somebody's probably even ripped the show because it's that good. Uh, this Marcus, uh, Marcus Limonis, of, he was featured in Secret Millionaire. Uh, and Secret Millionaire, he was this guy that nobody knew he was a millionaire. He actually owns a big company. Uh, uh, well, he's a CEO of it. So he's got multi-million dollars. You want to come back around here? So we're going to, and we're going to have, of course, as you can see, Kelly's not here today. And that is because she is on an audition. So let's give her a virtual clap, everybody. Virtual Yay! clap. So hopefully she'll put us in contact with the producing company and we'll talk and give her our references or give them our references that she needs to be on there. What do you think? Uh, sounds good, Kelly. We're mad at you. Uh, we miss you. Uh, it's been a while, so I'm just throwing it out there, okay? Wait, now let me introduce everybody because you often listen to her on our show uh, 10 months ago, right? You were always uh, on. Uh, and we yeah, I came out of nowhere mysteriously. Yeah, this voice, yes. this heavenly voice. Well, yes, this yes. is Mia Mocha Hello, Johnson. And what, yeah. what do you, what's 19? I don't know. I saw it on sale. <laughs> That's a good reason to want yeah, to wear it. So it's casual and it's pink and I love pink. You could be like, I'm forever 19. Nice. Right? That yeah. works. Okay, that's why I got it. Forever 19. Forever 19. I like it. Courtesy and you got, of Aaron. She's got what, the hot pink. Was it a dollar 99? Huh? 99? Was it a dollar 99? No, it was 19 cents. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> you Man, said on sale. Okay. You said it was on sale. Yeah, well, I just love the I color. like it, though. I like Thank it. Thank you. In fact, I want to know where you got one. So I, do they have guys? That's a good question. I got it at, where did I get it from? Walmart, I think. I, probably, I shouldn't say that, huh? I'm supposed to be a high-end shopper. Walmart, Ross. you guys. <laughs> hey, it's all right. We're, Ross we're all for less. Ross? Okay, look at you. Ross for less. Ross, Ross for less. Yeah, Ross is good. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've got big stuff. We uh, have you seen the? You probably haven't seen the prophet. I have. I didn't see it till we got this interview. No, I haven't seen it yet. But it sounds really cool. It is. And uh, you're talking about this this millionaire guy. Yeah, he comes in. Well, he, at first they didn't know he was a millionaire on the Secret Millionaire. Uh, this was on uh, on NBC, and he comes in and and. Then he kind of hears the story of uh, of the people of their organization, and there was bullying, and there were some other organizations uh, for kids that were neglected or Aww. abandoned. And then he put money into them, uh -huh. uh, you know, to, to fund them. And since then, now he has a regular show on CNBC called The Profit. Nice. And he, yeah. So he has a business. He'll go in. You know, usually they're they're failing in some way. Okay. And he says, "Look, I'm going to inject a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred fifty thousand, whatever his offer is to." Pick this up and make so we can make ten million dollars in sales. You know that's his com that's his thought process. And but he says if at the end of the week you cannot go by what I I say needs to be changed, then the deal's off. Oh, I oh, see. I'd be a risk. I'd be willing to take. You come on in and work things out. Yeah. Right, but yeah. these uh -oh. business owners but are crazy. What happened? They're crazy. Like one of them, he owns a dog. Uh, pa like, it's not a pound, but it's like a dog sanctuary, right, where all the dogs okay. go. Like a day daycare dog place which is a cool concept it's great yes but the owner berates all of the employees he yells at them he's like a little you know like chihuahuas when they <laughs> when they face a big dog and they want to make sure that they, the dog knows that they're the, the alpha head? yes are you serious i'm not kidding he's crazy and then there's another one and we'll talk about it on the interview where they they pretty much took his money like and said thank you very much. He had invested one hundred fifty thousand uh -huh. dollars, and we're gonna hear what happened to them, and did they pay back the hundred fifty thousand? Oh no! It's crazy. Really? Oh yeah, it's crazy. I gotta hear he, this. I I tried to watch this one to get my you know get all my, at least get a feeling for the uh -huh. show. I was on like a marathon of five by the end of that night. Oh, you and were I had hooked. To, yeah, I was. 
I was, and I am. I am. And you are. I am. Now I'm very curious. You got to check. It. It's on Hulu. When, and, and right now, it's also playing uh, uh, on the airplanes right now. I think oh, the airplanes, airline. Huh? Which one is it? <laughs> he knows everything, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, well, it's on his Twitter. <laughs> Marcus Marcus Lamonis, go follow him. He's, I think I better. At the time of this interview, which was like two days ago, he was at 10,000. Right now, he's like at 24,000 followers on Twitter. because. But of, what a good guy. Excellent guy, and he's really down to earth. You're gonna love this really? interview. Yeah, or you're gonna so love he's this. He's like the multi-millionaire next door, in his jeans, button down. Yeah, you that's a what. that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Multi-millionaire next door. You never know. You never know who you're talking to. I like right? that. I like that, especially when you have like rude people that you know are rude, and they're gonna treat them bad, and then it's mm-hmm. like bam. So you might see him in Walmart picking up a shirt. Nineteen. Yeah, nineteen. It's possible, right? With the earrings. No, he probably looked better in blue. What do you think? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, why not? Why okay. not? Okay, we've got good news giveaway. You remember Yay! our good news giveaway? Yes, it's been so long, Aaron, but I do remember. <laughs> Thank you. See, she's I'm obviously said him all the time. No, we're glad to be back. Um, uh, b- b- good news giveaway spa. Mm-hmm. We're giving away a spa. Oh, she's like, nice. how come I wasn't included? You didn't enter. You could have entered before you were. Even though I work here, I can still enter? Well, now you can't. Because oh, now you're on I the show. I shouldn't have said anything. Yeah, see, she so. She snuck it in there. Yeah, but. But you would have knew that it was up because it saved me a mocha, huh? You could have been like Java chip. Java chip? Well, chip. Mia, Mia Java <laughs> chip. They would have never known at that point. Okay. Okay. They would have never known. Okay. Uh, so we had our first winner. Congratulations, Yay. Bessie Lim. And we told Bessie Lim on Facebook. And if you're not following us, you got to follow us. Aaron M. Sanchez. Kelly V. Dolan. Yeah. We put all of our stuff up there. Of course. Mia's on there as well. You got to follow her. Mia. Yay, Mocha. Mocha. Johnson, okay. yeah. And, uh, and so this is what, this was so nice. This is what Nancy says uh, to us. Uh-huh. She said, um, Aaron and Kelly, I want to scream with exclamation I marks. I see them. Lots of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Exclamation. Uh-huh. I was moving all weekend and didn't have a chance to check Facebook. I so need a massage after moving all those oh. boxes. Thank you. You made my month. Wow, not the day, but the month. I know. Well, it's not the year either, so. But still, it, wasn't, that's it good. was almost there. Oh. <laughs> it was almost there. Maybe if we threw in like a facial applicator, maybe we could get a whole year. But you can enter as well. You just need to follow us. Aaron M. Sanchez, Kelly V. Dolan, now Mia Mocha Johnson. We'll have Yay. her put it on her uh, Facebook. Yeah. And maybe one of your friends will win and they'll be like, You made my year. Yes. Okay. That's She's like, yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> that was a nice delay. Uh, so, so check it out. And we're uh, going to give at the end of this show, you still mm-hmm. have a chance uh, right now to win Comic Con tickets. <gasps> Ventura County, they're doing a Comic Con this weekend. And so we're giving away two tickets uh, courtesy of Down the Road Show. You remember Casey Murdoch? Yeah. Yeah. Casey uh, called us and said he's helping sponsor them and promote nice. them. So, yeah. So we're going to help him give out some tickets. Now, have you been there? No. You haven't been there. Not that one. I've been to San Diego oh, yeah, and San like Diego. Wizard World, of course, Wizard mm-hmm. World. But no, not Ventura. I, or then there's another one in Long Beach. There's a bunch of them, you know, everywhere. Have you nice. been there? No, just the one in uh, San Diego. When did you go? I went there a few years ago. Got the costumes. It was so wild. I loved it. It was so exciting. I, I didn't know you were into comics. Oh, my goodness. I have. Um, Are you into comics or into movies? Movie Star Trek. Yeah, high five. Yes, yeah, I'm a Trekkie, so yes. I know it's the flip side of me, huh? Never I didn't know that. I know. I have pictures and everything at home. Because you're like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. I know I'm a shopaholic. I know like you're like a jo- <laughs> jazz girl. Yes. You love you know, music. music. and gardening mm-hmm. and Comic-Con. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you throw that in. That just that that up the bar and all of our viewers. I know it right now. I know they're probably. In fact, if you want to watch us, you can watch us live at yes. UStream. If you're looking for the link, just go follow us again on Twitter, Facebook. We put it out about an hour before our show, and you'll be able to participate. And you can always uh, chat with us live. In fact, Ra- Ray Rayanne Thorne said, "Nice moves." I think that was during Vassie's uh, song. Or, or, I had were you some breaking nice it moves. Down? I oh, evidently, look at you. Oh, evidently, you got moves. Uh-huh. I, I got a couple moves. Not enough though. We have to work. You can teach me the moves. I could teach some things. Yeah. I used to be a break dancer. Back no in way. Day. Yes. Did you tell Kelly that? No. <laughs> Why didn't you tell? She, I, I, yeah, I used she's to be a dancer. Back in the, well, I'm, I'm kind of 
throwing my age out there, but back in the 80s, you know, they had these where you had the linoleum and the spinning, and our, our group was Whoa. called Raw Material. What? Yeah. Do you have, like, photos of you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> I like I'm how you, like, so cramp. embarrassed. You know, in those days, you had the jerry curl and mm-hmm. the high top, mm-hmm. you know, everything was about Nike and... Oh my goodness, I'm embarrassed. We want that's video. I want. Oh do you have video? video? No, but I have pictures no, that I keep video. hitting in the box. We're gonna have to. Video. You know how you I want to see like, that. Oh my goodness, that's so video. dated. You remember the movie Breaking? You know how Prince and Purple Rain and Michael Jackson? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that was the end thing. And then the curls and everything and the breaking it down and. Let's see you do a break. Okay, I, I have a, I have a move. I'm trying. Yeah, and this for is, those of you, okay, I don't know how to explain this to our to our listening <laughs> audience on the road right now, but Mia's gonna break it down. <laughs> Can we get minute. some music for her, Brett? I just I Wait. just put Brett on the spot there. He, he's got. He, I don't think he has break music. No, that's okay. I, okay. There's one move though. This is one is simple. I don't even have to get out of the chair. Okay, everybody can look at this. Check this out. Okay, this here we go. This is one of the old ones. I hope it's not rusty. Okay, okay here we go. See my hands? Okay, here's one. Whoa! Oh, what is that? That's like a you're like oh, you a you're it. like a Martian with those hands right. now. Like a <laughs> wow! That's it's fun. I can't do that. Try I, it. Let me see. Hold on. Uh, okay, no. when Kelly comes, I want to see you bust down. You, break, bust okay, the you're gonna have to teach me on that. Let's All right. try. I think it, I think it, that's time for a break. Okay, let me run back in there. She's she's multi talented. We want to see how fast <laughs> Mia is on this show. We want oh. That's fast, Mia. Wow. That was amazing. She was like here and the music played. She went into flash mode right there. All right. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got Marcus Limonis on our show. And then after that, we didn't even get to talk about Chelsea. Chelsea from Baby Daddy on ABC Family. You're not going to want want to miss this. I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. That's right. We are live today in San Bernardino. We're taking your questions, and we're going to take your phone calls later on. Call us here now at 909-888-5222. 909-888-5222. We're going to take your calls. Tell us anything you want. We'll be right back right after this. Back to live with Aaron and Kelly. We're going to go to our interview with Marcus Limonis. He was awesome, fantastic. In fact, the call, I have to put this out there because the they usually give us an operator which will call us, right? And he he got disconnected, so he called us like a CEO would. He took charge, and he called us direct. Evidently, they give him our number. And so we had a longer conversation. We were only usually allowed 10 minutes or less, and then they cut us off. So we got a really good interview for you. Here it is. Check it out. Welcome to Live with Aaron and Kelly. I'm Aaron Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we have on the line with us, I'm so excited about this because I saw the first episode of The Prophet with Marcus Limonis and I tried to just watch one. I, I ended up doing a marathon of four in a row. I, I couldn't get off. I actually went to bed at one o'clock, had to get up at five <laughs> o'clock the next day, but I had my head filled. Thank you, Marcus Limonis, for joining us today. Well, good morning, guys, and, and, and for people who are listening, they missed a little snippet before you went live. We're talking about Kelly at the nunnery in downtown Chicago, so I just want to make sure that she doesn't get out of that. <laughs> yes, I, I, I have to let everybody know who's watching. Basically, I'm from Chicago, and I saw an 847 number come through. I was so excited, so I had to share with Marcus that I was from Chicago, so we talked about all the uh, great spots on the north side of Chicago. Now, Marcus, you're not from Chicago. Where are you from originally? I'm actually originally from Miami. That's right. Ah. And you know what? I, I know we're going to be talking about the prophet in, in the interview today, but I just want to go back just maybe, you know, a little bit before this show came about. Um, I, we were doing some research on you, and you've always been involved in the community. What do you think is the biggest influence in your life? Why, why did you find it so important to be involved in the community and, and start so many programs at such a young age? Well, you know, I, I, my best people always ask me who my mentor was in my life. And my mentor truly was my mother. And she kept a very, very, uh, I would call iron fist rule over how I behaved. 
and all of us have a mother that has some sort of influence, but she had me very focused on business, mm. but had me focused on the other side of it as well. Now, Marcus, I uh, did not get to see you on Secret Millionaire because they have it for like three ninety nine that I got to purchase it on YouTube, and I just didn't do that yet. But I'm going to do that. <laughs> you had a great experience, from what I understand. What's been the result from your time on the Secret Millionaire with the organization that you helped out? Well, the organizations that I helped have really done well. The, the key one was an anti-bullying organization. Uh, you know, a lot of teen suicides uh, have, have been generated out of kids being bullied. And and it was important for me. I was bullied as a child. I was, you know, kind of an overweight, fat kid with a lot of hair. Yeah, that was and, both of us. I, I yeah, so as we... <laughs> exactly. As we got older, I wanted to kind of stand up. What's interesting is... The episode that I did last week, which was L.A. Dog Works, yes, uh, was about bullying in the workplace. And he was like a little chihuahua. He was like a little chihuahua that doesn't get any attention, or if they, they they have to like overcompensate. He was so rude. Well, not only was he rude, but to me, I thought that when I graduated from elementary school, the bu- that bullying didn't really leave the schoolyard, mm-hmm. but to realize that it exists in the workplace. Mm-hmm. where people are trying to make a living to feed their family, pay their bills, pay their car note, all the things that all of us have to do to be to have to deal with a guy like this is just crazy. Yeah, it, it was insane. I was surprised you dealt with it as long as you did. And at the same time, you you know what? I, I can only imagine, these are the moments where they're actually captured on camera. I can only imagine the moments that you've had where they're not on camera. Like like the florist who basically reneged on you. I, he had like a bipolar moment. I don't know what happened. He was like, no, you didn't, you didn't put in money, but he had obviously said it before. But if that were not on camera, do you think he would have paid? Well, he actually didn't pay. His mother wrote a check after she saw the episode. He still, to this day, Jacob Mars in Pasadena, has never called me, never sent me an email, nothing to apologize for it. And off camera, he said to me, because I said to him, hey, Hank, you understand the cameras were running. You're going to look really bad. And he said, you know, I'll take my chances. And he said to me, morale has never been better. And I said, well, then let's do the deal. He says, why would I do the deal? You fixed my business already. Uh, Whoa. He admitted that off camera. That's just bad ethics. Wow. But you know what, guys? Here's the deal. It's good that that kind of stuff happens. It's bad in a way, but it's good. Because we want the viewer to realize how real and raw this is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that there are good people in the world, and there are people who aren't so good in the world. And if you don't see both of them, and everything, every show ends with hugs and kisses, then it becomes a home improvement makeover show, then it doesn't really teach people stuff. And at the end of every episode, I want people to leave and say, oh my gosh, I I learned something, or I know not how to behave, or Mm -hmm. who not to work for, or how to think, and there's there's really a theme through every episode, and that's the most important thing. You know, Marcus, you are so honest um, on the show, and, and just speaking with you, you give very honest uh, advice to business owners. What do you do when you come across a business owner that's sensitive, that doesn't know how to just take the cold truth? How do you, how do you deal with that? You know, it really depends on, on how they respond. I mean, there's a lot of people who are sensitive and emotional, and, and you have to be able to create an interpersonal relationship with them that isn't necessarily about business. And you gotta, you know, warm up the people and you gotta have them trust you and you have to show them examples of cases where it works or doesn't work. And and in the case of uh, EcoMe, which is a Bacoima based mm-hmm. business, um, you, I had to take these two ladies and really sort of break them down over time. And in the end, they had their emotional breakdowns and they came around and the reason that you see me being so patient is because that's typically how I am because I know that, you know, the old adage, it takes a lot to crack the nut. Mm. It takes a while just to have people trust you and go through the process and make sure that they understand that you're not there to hurt them, that you're there to help them. Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. I'm glad Absolutely. you brought that up because I, 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 I did see the girl that was the salesperson, the VP of sales at the time. Uh, she did break down and, and she didn't want, you could tell she didn't want to be on camera with that, but she still, you know, you, you went, you, you addressed the situation, you made it as it was, you pointed it out, you didn't really sugarcoat it, and then you hugged her in the end. And 
it seemed like she really came around. What's her? Is she still working for the company now? She is working for the company. She's doing a nice job. Uh, she's obviously learning to grow and take good, you know, constructive criticism. And you hate to do that. You hate to break people down to their core. But if you're in a business that's about to close and you haven't taken a check in a couple of years, yes, I don't know what else there is to talk about other than we just need to get down to business. Yes, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you, going back to the advice that you give people, what do you think is the biggest challenge when somebody starts a business and then how can they overcome that? What, is, there, is, there, is there a trend that you're seeing with businesses? Yeah, there is. The biggest mistake that I see businesses uh, that are started because they don't put enough cash into their business. They literally start with, you know, whatever they think it's going to take to make money in a year. And then they build these, what I call budgets. You guys have all seen them. They put Mm -hmm. this budget together. that They're going to make money in the first year or the second year. And and they're, I don't want to say delusional, but they're just so optimistic (laughs) and so positive that they don't realize that in the end, it's really not going to work. And if they don't have the working capital to survive the losses, that this great idea with this great process started by a great person just won't make it. That's, have you ever been in a situation um, where you maybe worked with a personal friend and, you know, it was the same situation. You, you're kind of trying to get through to a person and, and maybe it wasn't working. Is Obviously, it would be more difficult to walk away from that situation, but what advice do you have for somebody that's in that situation? Because so many times, especially right now, people are starting up businesses with friends, with family, and you've got another layer of a relationship there. What's your advice to those people when they kind of hit that hit that crossword where, crossroad where they're like, hey... I don't know if this is working yeah. or not, you know? I mean, my, my best advice is don't get into business with friends and family because here's what I always tell people. Generally, relationships end. And when they end, I don't know many relationships that end well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and if you're going to get into business, you know there's going to be ups and downs. Why would you subject a, a, a family member mm-hmm. or a long-term friend to the ups and the downs of the business, you know, the single biggest reason that people get divorced is because they remodel their house and they can't agree on the, the, the color of the cabinets. That's, That's true. a business decision. Especially the why, <laughs> Yeah, why would you get involved in something that you know is going to be tense from the beginning with somebody that you love? It just doesn't work. You know, speaking of marriage and uh, love, we had a couple Twitter and Facebook questions. Are you in a relationship right now? I am in a relationship, yes. <laughs> and I will tell you to my significant other, she hates the show. She hates it. <laughs> Why and so? The reason she hates, because she says, because she reads my Twitter account, and she says, look, you tell that girl that you're not available. <laughs> so it's, it's fun <laughs> in my house. That's it's hilarious. fun in my house because I had to actually, I had to actually defriend her so she couldn't see stuff. I know you. You know, in order to save a relationship, you almost have to not have them connected on Twitter or Facebook. That's the majority. Yeah, of she friend. said to me, "I keep friending you on Facebook. You're not accepting." I'm like, I don't know, something's wrong. With <laughs> you know, no I think, I think, I think Facebook might be the second in line as far as causing divorce right after remodeling the house. <laughs> I, th- I think that might come. Yeah, in nothing good. Day. Nothing good ever happens on Facebook if you're in a relationship unless it's business nothing good that's, that's true so Marcus. That's uh, true. well and it's funny because like as as we're talking you know twitter i looked at the florist for example their twitter and they did post we did pay him off you know per the uh, the you know be, per the uh the show and you could tell they were getting probably a lot of backlash on on twitter maybe even facebook mm-hmm. you know from people that were just watching like i was ready to say something so i could see how that is, is that big in business right now could that really work against you You know, social media is the single best asset or the single worst Mm -hmm. uh, liability of a company, depending on what their behavior is like. In the case of Jacob Mars, they got annihilated by Facebook and Twitter for the next, you know, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I think what ended up happening is they didn't call me the day after the show or two days after the show. The mother called me a week after the show and said, you have to help us. You have to figure out how to tell people that we're not bad people. I'll send you a check. Wow. If social media hadn't happened that way, would I have gotten that check? I have no idea. Wow. But you want people to behave the right way 
from the beginning. And here's the best business advice that I will ever, I think if I ever write a book, this will be the title, What Was Your Mother Say? When you make a decision in business or in life, you should always wonder what your mother's reaction would be. And when I'm going to do a business deal and it feels a little funky, I wonder what my mother's response would be. And if my mother would think it was a good deal and I was treating everybody fairly, then you do it. Mm -hmm. And if you think she would raise her eyebrow, there's a reason. And it's a great kind of way to think about things and how you treat people. Is it, would your mother slap you or would she hug you if you did this? And, <laughs> and every single person has a mother and every, every single person can relate to what that means. And your dad may be a little bit more liberal with your decisions. Your mother typically will tell you what's right and wrong. And it's a good rule of thumb for people. It would be a great book. What would your mother say? I like that. That's I really true. like that. You better start writing that because as soon as somebody hears it, they're going to take that title. You heard it first here on Live with Aaron and Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> now, real quick, before we let you go, Nancy Campos had a question, and I thought this was good. So she said, how much capital did you start with, mm. and how long did it take you to build your multimillionaire empire? So I started out with a company called Auto Nation, and uh, my first job right out of college, I was making 30000 a year, and that was in 2000, and, uh, excuse me, that was in 1995. Okay. Uh, and over the course of the years, I kept parlaying money. What happened is when I got into this camping business, uh, I built up some good relationships with banks like Bank of America and J.P. Morgan, and I got lucky. I'll be candid with you. I was able to secure some funds to start a business. Okay. Uh, I had to sign for it. I had to put everything I had on the line, mm -hmm. and I got lucky. And too often in life, it is a little about the right time and the right place. Mm -hmm. And I just started parlaying it, and I saved money, and I saved more money, and I paid my banks off, and I paid my interest on time. And over time, I continued to build that line of credit. And I continue to save money and I continue to get lucky and blessed by doing business with people that would also help me along the way. The most important asset that you need to have in making a lot of money is people that are smarter than you should be on your team. Mm. And I was lucky because at 30 years old, it's hard to hire 50 year old people. They don't take you very, you know, they don't take you seriously. Right. So I hired people that were smarter than me. I acknowledged that they were smarter than me. I paid them a lot of money, and we grew the business together. And that's really been my secret my secret weapon is that I hire people that are smarter than me. Well, I'm glad you said that because Kelly is a whole lot smarter than me, <laughs> which is why she's part of the team because she brings up the IQ level here. Well, no, you know, I, the one thing that I like about you saying that is the fact you acknowledge that somebody was smarter than you, which a lot, which means you put your own ego aside. And I, I feel like when I'm dealing with people in new business, whether I'm collaborating with somebody or I'm observing someone else's situation, the biggest thing that I see that fails a company is when someone's ego gets involved. And with it, that, the way you just put it right now, saying hiring smarter people just lets me know what kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that's why you've been so successful because you know how to. Put and, out and you know what, guys? I, I think it's. I think this is an important distinction, and it's a candid moment for me. Lee Iacocca was a, a good mentor for me over the years, and Lee was very uh, candid to tell me. It's good to be uh, have humility, and it's good to do all those things, but you have to have confidence. Mm -hmm. And don't ever mistake confidence for arrogance, but you have to have confidence. And that really will give you the ability and the moxie to ask for the sale when you're not supposed to, to ask to borrow money from a bank when you're not supposed to, mm -hmm. to look people in the face and convince them that you're right. And there's a common blend between humility and confidence, never to be mistaken for arrogance. Wow. I love that. Well, I, I, I love that. I'm going to keep following you. We hope you'll follow us and tweet <laughs> us uh, during the show tonight, especially. Uh, Marcus, you know, you have so many fans that I. St uh, congratulations, you just reached the 10,000 mark. I just noticed as of today so congratulations on that on on twitter but i opened my account a couple of weeks ago and i had to get a lesson with how, on how to do it so ah. i have to admit i wasn't a twitter fan a what? twitter follower like two weeks ago and you're responding to everybody you that's yeah, awesome that's very good but don't well, it's awesome but you know what everybody keeps telling me what cut it out because as the numbers get bigger you're not going to be able to do it you're going <laughs> to do that everybody. was going to be my advice to you i'm glad you got that you have very good advice listen to it <laughs> we thank you so well, much. guys thanks so much thank you thank Mark. you 
So we want to thank Marcus Limonis for spending time with us. What a fantastic guy, right? I mean, top, top echelon, top of the cream of the crop. He's so, a great guy. You talk yeah. about down to earth. You're right on. Right? Totally. So go check that out. The Prophet. You can watch it right now on Hulu. You can Google it. Go do that. But next, when we get back, we have from a- ABC's family. I'm so used to saying NBC. You see that? I, I completely messed it up. ABC's not going to let us do any more interviews. ABC Family's Baby Daddy. We've got Chelsea Kane when we come back right after these messages. Don't go anywhere. Born with them hazel lights, cinnamon twist. Running round my mind, I got you all up in my fizz. You flawless with your moves, hmm, boy, I like your mom every day. Hey, hey. And I don't understand why I'm feeling this way. Cause every time you go, I just want you to stay. Welcome to Live with Aaron and Kelly. I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez, and that's right. I am ready for this because I am now a fan of Baby Daddy, and we have Chelsea Kane on the line with us. Chelsea, are you there? Hi. Good morning. How's it Good morning. Why are you laughing? You've al- you're already laughing. I didn't even say anything. Wait, what was that? I said you already laughed. Yeah, you're already laughing at me liking Baby Daddy. Oh, I love that! No, it's, I, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so happy you do. I am. I'm a big fan now. I've, I've, I'm, I'm now following on Twitter and Facebook. But you know, also, I and I have to say, uh, I, I was kind of introduced to you by watching Baby Daddy, and what a great, fun show! What's it like being on that on that team? Oh, thank you so much. I'm so sorry that you watched it. That's awesome. Um, it's the best job ever. I'm, I'm. So happy to be a part of the show, and and I I think I think part of what's making it work is how much this cast and crew really really love each other. Um, you know, this this project kind of fell into my lap, and um, the first night we did the first live speaking in front of the audience, and we just felt it, just like kind of that lightning in a bottle thing. And the whole cast is off. Actually, um, Derek and Jean Luc, who played Ben and Danny brothers. Uh, lived together in real life. <laughs> they, ended up, they got a place together. And Todd Corey is one of my best friends. And we all we all just run around together all the time and just almost love. I think that really comes across on screen. Got it. So everybody's like you're having fun off camera, and it translates to even fun on camera. Oh yeah, we're we're having the best time, and you know we all hang out on the weekends. Now we have to, we we're really careful with what we. To work with on Monday, the crazy stories that we tell everyone in the writers room on Monday. Because stuff from our personal lives is starting to show up in the show. Oh. So we'll get a new script and be like, wait a second, this actually happened. So, um, yeah, the lines are really starting to get blurred. That's actually kind of, that's. That's yeah. That's got to be scary because I know, like we talk, like Kelly and I have our own stuff, and and we to see all of a sudden our stories being told and reenacted on camera would be a little unnerving. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty funny. We so we're starting to, to kind of watch what we say, and kind uh, <laughs> of like what came first, the chicken or the egg with these characters. Uh, they're they're really starting to become the same person. You're all mums. The word, yeah, I could understand that now. Um, <laughs> I, I will say congratulations on your social media presence. I mean, a million, uh, and congratulations for hitting a million on Twitter. That's fantastic. Um, I think in order for, for me to even get near that, I'd have to just buy a bunch of followers. But yours are all real. I mean, what's that like? You know, how long have you been a Twitter fo- a user? Um, I've been on Twitter for a couple of years, but I've definitely when it first kind of um, kind of are gaining so much momentum where everyone was sitting on Twitter. Uh-huh. Um, I love it. I love social media. I'm a big fan. I love that instant connection with the fans. It's just awesome. And one of the things about ABC Family that I love working for them is ABC Family is very specific when it comes to social, you know, social networks, Twitter, and Instagram. Right. And so during the show, you can actually interact with 
the actors who are on the show on Twitter, like tonight, if anyone's watching Baby Daddy, um, uh, during the East Coast speech, so like 5.30 for the West Coast, 8.30 for um, everyone on the East Coast, um, we'll all be doing a live chat. Uh, so you use the hashtag Baby Daddy Chat. You can see all the different actors in the show. We'll answer your questions, and the family also like up on things um, for people to see during the show. So it just makes it it makes it really fun. Um, it just makes it the whole baby daddy community in that half hour that the show's airing. But you blog as well, right? I mean, your fashion is really, I mean, it's, I know I'm speaking for Kelly, and I know she's going to want to know this. Who does your fashion? Is that all you, or do you have a consultant? Do you have someone that dresses you? What, what how do you do it? Oh, thank you. Um, I have a stylist. Um, her name is Rhonda Steve, so I've worked with for years. She's awesome. And, um, yeah, it's been a real kind of fashion evolution for me as I figure out, you know, what stuff I like and that was really funny. I've been designing my own pieces just for me. Uh-huh. Um, not like there's no fashion line or anything coming out. <laughs> but there should just, be. There, um, I, I, I could see a, oh, I could see a fashion you. line. Yeah, absolutely. You you could rival Ann Taylor. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I actually designed my dress for the two awards that I wore. Uh, I yeah, we up it like a couple days before the awards, and uh, yeah, so it's been it's been a really fun part of the you know. Little side job. <laughs> it. Don't ask me how I know about Ann Taylor. I just, I, I know <laughs> girls that know fashion. So that's it. <laughs> Don't read into that. Um, uh, but you know, I, we've got a lot of Twitter questions and I have to ask this before we let you go because they will then bombard me saying, why didn't you ask her this? So do you mind taking a couple questions from the Twitter fans? Oh no, I would love that. Okay, so I, I'm going to ask you the, the one that I think has been asked by almost every fan. Um, who are you dating, if you care to share that with us? Yeah. Um, I kind of like to keep that stuff uh, personal, but I will say that he's a great guy and uh, I was having a good time. So. Okay, because there is a rumor mill going online. I'm sure you've seen it already, so I'm going to keep that out. <laughs> I respect your privacy because <laughs> I'm the same way. My my five girlfriends, I don't want anybody to know about them. You don't want them to find out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I totally understand that. Um, <laughs> uh, now, here's a question from B. Spoonerisms. Uh, no, no, uh, no, I'm sorry. Sarvin Sidhu, who's the nicest person on set? The nicest? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Um, not a tough one. I would have to say that's by the same Derek Dealer and Melissa Peterman. Um, Melissa is not only the funniest person on set, but she um, she's so kind and so thoughtful and one of the best fist givers in the world in a really funny way. Like, if it's your birthday, you know that phone app, Old Booth, where you can put your pictures in like old, bad yearbook photos? No, I didn't know. No. Uh, I, now I it's, know. It's hilarious. You have to download it, Old Booth. And it, it turns your picture into like this hideous old like 1940s style yearbook photos okay and so melissa will do like funny pillows of birthdays or um all these like valentine's day cards all made out of old booths and uh they're absolutely hilarious so she's very thoughtful and, and very kind awesome okay so uh here comes from baby daddy fra well fr which i think stands for french because or French because I said French. Oh, huh? sure. Yeah, uh, baby daddy French fan. The question is, if one day would you like to come back to France? Have you ever been to France? I have been to France. I love, oh, I love France. Um, yes, as soon as I can get back there, I will. Um, I have been there twice. Last summer, I yeah, I was in Paris for a while and um, stayed in the Latin Quarter and just had the best time. So as soon as I can come back, I will. Okay, and then this is the last question, and then I know we, we're being signaled to let you go. Uh, you have a picture on Instagram of Bar Chelsea. Do you, or do you have a bar, yes or no? Baby Daddy uh, French fan also wants to know. Um, it's not a bar that's, that's really open to the public. Um, it's a joke that every Friday night, we take in front of a live audience on Friday night, and after every show, the whole cast and crew comes back to my dressing room. Um, for like a glass of wine instead of a celebration, have another you know show in the bag. So 
become a joke. So everyone said after the show tonight, are we going to the bar shelf? The brands are putting in down sign, and they're actually in a bar in my like, restaurant. We don't mean a bar. That's funny. So uh, it's a really fun place to kind of uh, hang out and, and celebrate after every show. So, yeah, that's where you can find the best of the on a Friday night. Well, congratulations on your season. What's what's next for you? Um, well, we're actually in the middle of shooting the third season right now. Awesome. So we will be working on the third season until January. Um, so still a lot of baby daddy going on in, in my life. You know, tonight is the summer finale. Um, the third season will be the back with some pieces. That's nice. That's nice, though, to know you, you're you going another season. That's fantastic. Congratulations on everything you're doing. We're going to be watching you on ABC Family. And thank you so very much, Chelsea. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So that was Chelsea Kane. Go follow her on Twitter. That's right. She has a million followers. Maybe I can get one or two from her. But go check her out. Fantastic girl. She has a blog. Go check that out. And, of course, check out on ABC Family, Baby Daddy. You can also get that online, too. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to take some of your calls and do a couple shout-outs. I'm going to do a shout-out right now. Chicago Johnny, he sent us these shirts from Chicago. He knows Kelly's from Chicago. And next week, we're going to try out his product. That's going to be pretty cool. Stay tuned right there. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back to Live with Aaron and Kelly. We are here in the studio in San Bernardino. And I want to say a big shout out to Chicago Johnny again for giving us these shirts. And we're going to wear them next week as well. In fact, I'm going to have to wash this with all my sweat from right now because I'm sweating. It's hot in here because we had some awesome guests and, uh, and I want to thank you for being here listening to us. Uh, we said we would give away a ticket, and we're going to give away two tickets to the uh, Comic-Con over here in Ventura to Lisa Green. Congratulations, Lisa. Uh, I know she had tweeted us as well saying, how can I listen to you guys? I'm going to be at work. And so we tweeted back how she could listen that's, to us. That's super cool. Isn't Congratulations. That cool? Congratulations. That's right. Yeah. And if you want to listen to us live, you're across the nation. You don't. You cannot get to a computer. Go to bit.ly forward slash Aaron and Kelly NBC, and you'll be able to listen to us every Thursday at 2 o'clock live, or just wait for the YouTube or TV broadcast. Now, we've got a couple people on the line. We've got, yes. uh, I believe, is it Constantine? I think Yes, it's Constantine. Okay, so let's see. Constantine, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm your biggest fan, Aaron. And oh. is that Mia from the Poor Man fame, the one that oh. said you grow up to poor man? <laughs> is oh, that... it is. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Mia, I love you, too. <laughs> and uh, Aaron, I missed you, man. I mean, oh. you were just so amazing. You know, I think you're the best part of that morning show on Thursday. So oh. I just want to say that, that welcome back. And, uh, and we love you. Where, where's that cute little Kelly at? <laughs> she's uh, she's actually see no one. He's <laughs> blushing. Oh my! Goodness. I'm trying to figure out who this is because I'm blushing. trying to see if this is. Uh, but you know, but thank you, Constantine, for tuning in. Uh, actually, Kelly is at an audition right now, so we want to wish her the best. And and in fact, you can watch her right now. Have you seen her on Netflix yet? You know, she's on uh, a film. Yes. I yeah. That. Yeah, that's so I cool. I saw. Her, I also saw her in the Hooters commercial. That was cool. Aww. Yeah, Hooters. Wow, he you're a, a big fan. fan. Yes. Wow, thank you. Thank you for yeah. tuning in. So, thank you guys. How, you, do you watch us live or listen on uh, to the radio or do you YouTube or? I do both. I do it all. You know, I follow you on Twitter, and I I really like what you say about how the chef is. Uh, you and the chef get kind of mixed up sometimes. That's pretty funny. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so very much for tuning in. And uh, we, uh, Facebook us and tell us and, and go ahead and tag me on Facebook. All right? Thank you so very much, Constantine. Thank you. Thank you. So that was – thank you. Wow. It's funny. You never know who's listening, right? You you never know. So – and evidently they know everything about Mia, so oh, that's good. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's like, they probably just tuned in because of you, Mia. That's good. We're going to have yeah, you more right. on the show. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, we have another caller. Okay. Oh, who, wait. Oh, oh, it dropped. Oh, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. There was a gentleman that called and said he's just so glad to see you back here. Oh, that was nice. You have nice. a lot of fans. See, Aww. I told you like at the beginning of the show. I know. Aaron. Well, I thank you. I thank you. And we want to – you know, <sighs> I want to go out with this because Chicago – Johnny, 
And I owe Chicago Johnny quite a lot because he actually sent us a package with some some food for us to try oh, and nice. other t-shirts. Uh-huh. And then they kind of got lost in my in in the whole in the miss space of my car. And <laughs> yeah. And then it was in the heat, and then they started leaking, and then they got into the t-shirts. So I had to go back and what? tell Chicago Johnny. I said, I'm sorry, we couldn't try it out because it, and anyway. So he sent us back one, and he sent us a letter. I'm only going to read a little portion of it. He said, thanks so much again for letting me know about the last package. I want to throw into a package some hand screen signs in my Italian beef sandwich recipe. Kelly is certainly aware of the importance of, and I'm going to misspell this, but uh, uh, Gar- Gardeniera? on an Italian beef sandwich. So this guy went from borrowing $600 to start up his his recipe. He did it. He went out there. It's online. Go to chicagojohnnies.com. We're going to try it out next week. See what we think. Oh, nice. You're going to have to be here for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did I just hear you smack? Is your mouth getting kind of? I am. Thinking you about know what? That? I, well, I yes, I, I heard Italian beef sandwich, and uh-huh. I was like, oh, I'm oh, all over I just, that. I, wait a minute, that caller did call back. Okay, him right now. Real quick, go ahead. We got less caller, than a minute. Caller, you're on the air. Who's hey, it? Aaron. Hey, Steve who's Schneikert. this? Steve Schneider. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for tuning in, Steve. Steve is a, a awesome publicist. He's gotten us onto some other radio shows. Oh man, I have no problem. Thank you so. And Steve's been awesome. Steve, thank you for tuning in. Yeah, I just wanted to catch you real quick and say I love Aaron and Kelly. Oh, me, I love it when you're on Illuminate Your Life. Oh, Excellent. thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. very much, Steve. And thank all of you for watching because you make it possible for us to be here on Live with Aaron and Kelly. I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. Kelly will be back next week. We'll be right back after a whole week. Stay tuned. <laughs>